Hello, everybody. This is Tyler Baker, the soon-to-be pastor of Valley of Baptist Church and the former deacon of Faithful Word Baptist Church in Phoenix, Arizona, pastored by Stephen L. Anderson. Now, this is going to be a response video, a first of many response videos to Stephen L. Anderson and to all the just the lies, the false accusations, the railings, just the wickedness and the evil that this guy has spewed from his mouth just over the past many, many months. And this is just still going on. So it, it's it's... It's ridiculous. It's so ungodly, unchristian. So many people are just going along with this, like this is all right. And so I'm going to make a video, and I'm going to make a, a a series of videos. I'm going to make you know uh, uh, many videos responding to him, and I'm going to start with a response to his first video that he made about me being fired. Tyler Baker fired from FWBC. Now, as I said, I worked as the deacon, you know, for uh, Stephen L. Anderson, for uh, Pastor Stephen L. Anderson, for Faithful Word Baptist Church. <clears throat> And supposedly, if you watch the video, I'm fired because, um, you know, I'm, I believed in a false doctrine. I'm a oneness. I'm a modalist. Those are all lies to begin with. I'm going to be preaching a series at Value Baptist Church on Sunday nights, going through in the very beginning the nature of God, just so that I clarify the position that we, that we hold, the position that we believe. The guy is a total liar. He's represented our position from the very beginning. He has no interest in the truth. You know, he's a complete and absolute liar. Now, supposedly, I was fired for that, for my false beliefs, according to him. But it's funny because when you listen to the video, he goes over, you know, he just keeps talking about how I'm lazy, how I'm ignorant, how I'm arrogant. And I'm going to go over the reason why he said all those things, you know, uh, why he had to fill the video up with, with all of those accusations and not with, you know, all, uh, all, why didn't the whole video didn't just consist of my false teachings, my false doctrine, and all of that. Now, I want to first just go over all the false accusations uh, about me and about me while I worked at Faith Forward Baptist Church. Supposedly, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, this lazy, horrible, terrible worker. I'm going to begin when I moved to, to Faith Forward Baptist Church. In 2014, in July, the end of July, beginning of August, is when I moved to Faith Forward Baptist Church. I came down a month before that in the month of June to look for work and lodging for my family and I. At that time, I stayed with a guy named Charlie Jeffrey. I was there for about three or four days. You could, uh, Matt Adams, the guy that, that lived underneath of them at that time, and he would bring up to me all the time, you know, you're never here. You're always gone throughout the day. He would talk to me about that later. You know, you were never there. And he would bring it up to me multiple times because I was out all day looking for jobs. I, I found a few jobs, and I ended up taking one and sticking with one, uh, which was a really large telecommunications company, a big networking company in the Phoenix area. I worked there for about three or four months, and it was probably, in, it was in the fall, maybe around October, November, I worked just as a technician during that period of time, and then I was given a promotion, and I was a foreman from about October, November to December, somewhere around then, and then I was given an additional promotion. When I was a foreman, I was just an on-site foreman, just like an on-site supervisor. We just did data, cabling, communications, fiber, things like that. And then in January, end of December, beginning of January, I was given an additional prom promotion as a project manager. And I served as a project manager at that company for about a year. And the reason I only worked there for a year is because at the very end of that, uh, of my, of the, of that year, in 2015, Pastor Anderson approached me and presented the job opportunity to work for the church. And I was, I was very interested in it, but I will admit I was very nervous. You know, he told me nobody had ever worked for the church. I didn't know what the financial, you know, state of the church was, and it made me nervous just switching jobs. I liked my job a lot. And, uh, you know, I even presented to him at that time, hey, you know, what about, you know, I work a lot of hours now for my company now, like 70 hours a week, 80 hours a week. What about I work full time for you and full time for them? And I'll work, you know, on the days that I'm off, Saturday, Sundays here, I'll work nights throughout the week. And if, you know, he lied about so much, I don't know if he'll lie about this too, but you can ask him about that. And he said, no, you know, I, I need somebody. I got so much work I can hire. You know, he, he was just explaining there's so much work. He can hire two people. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he's like, I need you to come on, you know, as a full-time employee. I need to, you to, I need to be able to, you know, uh, use you throughout the days and stuff like that. So I came on as a full-time employee and, and uh, on January 1st, 2015, it would have been. 2016. January 1st, 2016. January 1st, I was hired on at Faith 4 Baptist Church. Now, I was not originally hired on as a deacon. I was originally hired on as a servant, just a servant at the church. Now, the reason for that was because there was going to be a three-month trial period. There was going to be a three-month trial period, and then he would find out at the end of the three months whether I was going to be hired. Well, guess what? Or whether I was going to be ordained and keep serving as a deacon. Guess what? 
He ordained me. There's a video on, I just actually put it on private on my YouTube, but I can, if anybody wants to see that, everybody knows. Anybody who's following the movement knows these things to be true that I'm going to go over. And it just makes all these claims ridiculous. And un, they're just, it's just totally ridiculous. So I was hired on after a three-month trial period. So if I was so lazy, if I was so ignorant, if I was so arrogant, why would you hire me on after, isn't that the purpose of a trial period, whether to find out if somebody's a good worker or not? Not only that, I want to say this too. I had a good job working as a project manager and Pastor Anderson agreed to hire me on at the same wage of which I was being paid as a project manager, which was $25 an hour. Now, why would you hire on a guy and, and not only hire him on because you wouldn't know then, but after three months, you just keep paying him this same wage, $25 an hour. And let's say you could have approached that person and said, hey, you know, I don't feel like you're worth what I'm paying you right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deduct your wages to $21 an hour. Or maybe you could just say this isn't working out if you didn't want to go through that. But I continued to make $25 an hour the entire time I worked there. Not only did I make $25 an hour, at the end of that year around fall time, all October, November, <coughs> Pastor Stephen L. Anderson gave me a raise. So I ended up making $26 an hour at the end of that year. There's plenty of people that I actually told this about when I worked there. I didn't maybe tell them exactly how much I made, but I mentioned this to them. I actually thought that Pastor Anderson was, at, was a very good employer. He was a good employer while I worked there. He treated me very well. I'm not going to... See, he may just lie about all this crap, and he just may have zero integrity in this situation, but I'm not going to do that. You know, I believe that Pastor Anderson was a very good employer, and I actually would brag to people about how well he treated me and stuff like that, you know, as an employee. He, you know, he treated me very well until, he, you know, something ended up happening, and I'm going to get into all of that, what actually took place. Now, in, at the end of that year, he ended up giving me a dollar an hour raise. What? Number one, I'm already making $25 an hour. If I am like this horribly crappy employee, the last thing you're going to do is give me a dollar an hour raise. Now, at this time, you know, I just kept serving at the church. I had been preaching at the church the entire time. Not only had I been preaching at the church, we took on a new ministry, Faithful Word Baptist Church North. And guess what I was told specifically? You're going to be the head of that ministry. I want this to be kind of like, I don't remember exactly how I put it, but I want you to kind of manage things at Faithful Word Baptist Church North. And that was what I did the entire time. I, I wrote up the bulletins. You know, we took in the offering. You know, I made sure I got the offering from all the other guys. We counted it with all the other offerings. And now I did everything there. I uploaded all the videos for everybody to the website. I made sure I got the media from them. And, you know, I did everything at Faithful Word Baptist Church North, basically. Obviously, the other guys, I'm saying as far as administrative work. And, and, and so I, I got that dollar an hour raise. I'm in continually given obligations. And Pastor Anderson, too, he wants to say, like, he never, he never, like, one time, the entire time I was there, and it was literally, like, two weeks before I was ordained, did he ever, like, rebuke me or sharply correct me. He corrected me a few times, like, as in, hey, you don't do that th that way. Or, hey, I would rather have this or do that. He sharply corrected me one time, when, and this was about two to three weeks. It was in front of his wife and him in my office, and I had made a mistake on something. That's why he corrected me. You know, he wants to act. If he, I don't know if he's went around and told people that. If he wants to try to act like he went around rebuking me all the time, that's a total and absolute lie, too. If he is doing that, why would I just continue to serve there? Why would I continue to be the deacon? Why would I continue to be? Why would I be given a dollar an hour raise? You know, and not only that, at the end of that year, when it, when it came Christmas time, we were actually expanding and we were building the kitchen at that time. We were putting in, you know, some stuff in there and, and, and I do like construction work and stuff like that. So I was kind of heading up the, the kitchen work. We were in there and we were putting in the cabinets and all of that. And there was a piece that, that was wrong or that they gave us that was missing. It was a piece missing, I believe. And uh, Brother Garrett was there. Uh, Pastor Anderson was there. And I said, hey, I'm, it was like 6 o'clock. And I was like, hey, I'm going to run out real quick and go get that piece from, uh, uh, we got it at Ikea. And Pastor Anderson follows me outside to my van while I'm getting in my van. And he's talking to me about how he wants to give me a, a bonus. And he's like, hey, how I, I, I've been thinking about giving you a Christmas bonus. Like I said, he was a great employer. You know, I had no problems with him. Now he just wants to lie about my, you know, my work ethic while I was an employee there. He's like, hey, I want to give you a Christmas bonus. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I really appreciate it. And he's like, how much do you want? And I told him, like, I don't have a clue, like, even where to begin, like, how to give you a number. I have no idea. 
you know, what I should even, you know, I don't know. And he's like, haven't you ever been given a Christmas bonus? And I said, yeah, I've been given like gift cards. I've never been given like money. And I didn't want to like, you know, say, you know, I didn't want to like say some number like a hundred bucks. And he's like, whoa, or whatever, $200. And he's like, whoa. And he's like, hey, how about a thousand dollars? And I was like blown away. I was like, that is way more than I would even have expected you to say. That is, and I was like, you know, very thankful. I told him, thank you very much. And I actually went out and I bought uh, with $100 of the Christmas bonus, I had heard him and his wife talk about how they love going to the Brazilian Steakhouse. So I went out and I got them a gift card to the Brazilian Steakhouse and, and, and gave that to them. There's somebody with me. I can't remember who it was, but there's somebody who was, who was working, uh, you know, who's visiting the church and rode with me when we went out there. I don't remember who it was. But we went out there and I, and I got that you know, from the Brazilian Steakhouse and gave them that gift card. But the point is this. I work there for a year now. You know, you've given me a dollar an hour raise. And not only if you give me a dollar an hour raise, I'm making $26 an hour. I'm not making like, you know, you know what you would pay like a laborer at a warehouse. And not only that, you gave me a $1,000 Christmas bonus. Pastor Anderson gave me a $1,000 Christmas bonus at the end of that year. Now, I don't think that he's going to lie about all these things, but I have no idea because just the, the, his recent videos that he's come out with are just disgusting. Like the stuff that he says, I would have never imagined him to say. The guy has just went off the deep end, like, really super bad. And so he gave me that $1,000 Christmas bonus. The very next month is when I went out and I held the um, Soling Marathon in Jacksonville. If I am this big idiot, why would you send me single-handedly, you know, by myself, without help, to a foreign city to hold and host this marathon on behalf of your church? And I'm coordinating the whole thing. I'm, you know, and and when we would all have all, all the other Sony marathons, almost all of them, I would make the maps, and and at least half of them, I would make the maps. I would do all kinds of things for that, for the for the Sony marathons. This one, I coordinated everything, every single last aspect of the marathon. I did everything, and supposedly I'm this ignorant, arrogant, lazy, stupid person. Why would you do that? Why why would you be afraid? Oh, the, you know, I'm gonna send him out there, and he's gonna fail. He's gonna make me look stupid. So. Not only that, during this whole time, I mean, it would take forever to go over the responsibilities and everything that I was doing. You know, I was, I was doing the taxes for the church. I was doing all the accounting work. I was doing, you know, uh, website updates. I was doing, I was ordering, you know, all of our Bibles, all of our hymnals. I was picking all this material up. If we had invitations, I was getting those. I was, I was getting, you know, all of the cleaning supplies. I was, you know, I, I mean, it could just go on and on. I was doing the paper. If the printers needed ink, I would go get that. If we had some sort of technical difficulty, I would work on that. You know, I, uh, like I said, I was updating Faithful Word North uh, website. I, did, I actually designed that website. I had no clue how to design websites and uh, until then. And he, Pastor Harrison even taught me some HTML code to work on Faithful Word's website for a little while. I just had like a list of just, just tons and tons of responsibilities. I did everything for the church until Brother Garrett came on board. And then Brother Segura came on board. So all the way up until this point, you know, uh, January, I held the Jacksonville Soul Winning Marathon. Not only that, I went around and preached at all of these other churches. I went and preached at Word of Truth. Why would he be doing all these things? Pastor Anderson on his Facebook was actively promoting Valiant Baptist Church. If you had questions about sending me out, that's the last stinking thing you'd be doing is just keep promoting the church. You, if you had questions and you were just kind of, you know, you just didn't want to tell anybody, you're doing the exact opposite of that. You would just have been quiet. You know, you wouldn't be, and you know what, uh, somebody called in in like in February or so, and everybody knows this at Faithful Word Baptist Church, somebody called in and they were requesting for Pastor Anderson to come do their funeral because their son had died, uh, a very nice woman in Washington. And Pastor Anderson was going to be in Old Path Baptist Church that same exact weekend, so he recommends for me to go preach at the funeral. Do you see like the types of responsibilities, the types of things that he's just handing off to me? So he flies me all the way to Washington. I preach at this funeral. Not only that, while I'm there, he comes up with the idea, hey, I'm going to call Pastor Jimenez and I'm going to ask Pastor Jimenez if you can preach at Verity Vancouver while you're there. So I, after I preached at the funeral, I drove down and I preached at Verity Vancouver. And then I flew back to, um, uh, to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. At, any soul winning marathon that I wanted to go to, Pastor Anderson would always just book me a ticket and he'd pay for it. I mean, like I said, he was super generous while I, while I worked there, you know, and uh, he was a great employer, like great, like I said. Now, he he ended up uh, calling Verity Vancouver. I preached there. Not only that, a little while after I preached at Verity Vancouver, uh, Verity Vancouver, Pastor Jimenez called Pastor Anderson and asked and invited me 
to come preach at his church. He's like, hey, you know, uh, I don't know exactly what he said, but he asked he asked me and went through Pastor Anderson to, before he had asked me to make sure that it was okay because obviously, you know, I work for Pastor Anderson, make sure I can take that time off. Pastor Anderson agrees. Why would you keep doing this? Why would you be sending me out to preach at these church, paying, you know, uh, money for me to go up there and, and host a funeral, uh, you know, or, or conduct a funeral, preach at a funeral, you know, host a, a soul winning marathon, just actively promoting the church the entire time, giving me thousand dollar Christmas bonus, giving me a dollar an hour raise. The guy is a bold faced liar. He is a complete and absolute liar. None of this makes sense. And with somebody with a half a brain in their head, that's not just like, whatever Pastor Anderson says, I'm just going to listen to every word that he says. They would, they would say, like, none of this makes sense. Not only that, and I'm going to show the clip here at the end of this video about, well, I guess it was like four or five months before all of this went down, you know, six months maybe before I was supposed to be sent out. Pastor Anderson stands up behind the pulpit and he's preaching uh, double-minded and unstable from the book of James. And he's preaching on uh, Brother Miller at that time had, you know, had had his, his downfall when he went out. And he started the church, Soul Winning Baptist Church in, in Tennessee. And, you know, the church was disbanded. He just left and, you know, uh, talked to everybody, explained, you know, that he was going to he was going to close the church. Well, Pastor Anderson preached a whole sermon about it and talked about it and addressed the whole issue. And I'm going to show a clip here in a minute, but <clears throat> he's going over like, from this point forward, we're going to be even more strenuous on our qualifications and we're going to watch guys even closer. And he mentions, you know, a few people brought up to me how they had some reservations about it and I wish they would have brought it to me sooner. And now, from now on, we're going to be, you know, so much more tighter on our qualifications when we send someone out. Right after saying that, and supposedly in the midst of me being lazy and all that, this is what he says. He says, you know, it takes more than just preaching. You know, there's other qualifications. You can, Brother Miller was a great preacher. And Brother Miller was a good preacher. He says, Brother Miller's a great preacher. And he said, you know how many guys we have in the preaching class? And he says, we have like 30 or 40. I remember a lot. And he says, do you know how many we have that are qualified to pastor a church? And he says, one. Brother Tyler Baker. Or Tyler Baker, something like that. So, can anybody with a brain in their head would say, you know what? None of this makes sense. Even if you don't believe, you know, the stuff about the dollar an hour raise, which I'm sure he'll tell the truth about that. I, I, you know, I don't know how sure I am now, but the dollar an hour raise, the Christmas bonus, the three, you know that I was, or I had a three month trial period. I served as a deacon the entire time. I'm allowed to preach behind his pulpit. Not only that, let me make another point too, that I thought about this. Think about this for a minute. You... I preached behind Pastor Anderson's pulpit, and not only did I preach behind his pulpit, but I was sent to preach behind other men's pulpits that he's very close to, that he loves and adores and things like that. And almost every time I preached about, in some way, about working hard, striving for mastery, why sit we here until we die? Multiple times I preached behind his pulpit at Faithful Word Baptist Church. Why sit we here until we die? Happy are these thy servants. You know what the subject or the topic of the sermon was? Working hard. Being a good steward, being a good servant. Do you expect me to believe that you would allow your deacon to stand up behind the pulpit and preach on the subject of work, of being a good servant when he's lazy, when he's arrogant, when he's ignorant, when he's stupid, when he's just this crappy employee? That is the stupidest thing that I've ever heard. You know what that, you, know, you have two choices then. This is, these are your choices, Pastor Anderson. You're either a complete and absolute liar, which is that's the right choice. You're a liar. Either that or you're a woman or you're too sissified. You're too, you're too big of a sissy. You're too scared to approach your deacon and say, hey, you shouldn't be preaching about that. You shouldn't be talking about subjects like that because you're lazy. Why did I keep preaching about it? But let me get back to the video clip. So in the clip, he's talking about we have one guy that can pass our brother, Tyler Baker. This is like months before I'm sent out. And then supposedly he just comes out with this video. He was lazy and arrogant and ignorant all along. You know, all along. But he gave me a dollar an hour raise to $26 an hour. He gave me, you know, a thousand dollar Christmas bonus. He sends me to all these churches. He promotes the church actively. He says, you know, months before I'm supposed to be sent out, Brother Tyler Baker is the only person. You have got to be just a blind, you know, it, I, I don't understand. Like, it, it's just so ridiculous that people could just go along with this. It just shows how many people out there just have no desire to know the truth. 
They have no desire to know, you know, what really went on in all this situ all these situations. And I'm going to go through, this is the first of many videos. I'm going to go through so many false accusations from him, from, <clears throat> excuse me, so many other people. It's just totally and absolutely ridiculous. And here's the thing. You know, I would rather all of this just go away. Totally. Just leave us alone. We're going to go serve God. Time will tell. When we're serving God for 10 years and we're still preaching the right gospel and we're still and all of our doctrine is still straight because I'm going to straighten out, you know, clarify everything about what we really believe as well. But in 10 years when all that's the same and we're still serving God and we're still exactly the same and everything's been, you know, clarified it's going to prove that you were a liar all along. That we weren't these heretic, modalist, evil, wicked people coming in to subvert people. And, and I'm going to make videos about the supposedly the people that I was stealing from the church. All of that stuff. I'm going to address each point of this. The guy is a total and absolute liar. This video just proves that the guy lies. He's not, he has, you know, it's, it, it couldn't be any more pathetic. It really, really couldn't. And it couldn't be any more pathetic, the people that are willing to go along with this. It makes no sense. You have to be blind or dumb to believe it. I'm going to end with the clip out of Pastor Steven Anderson's own mouth. But the thing about it is there will be 30 or 40 guys that show up to preach. But guess what? Those 30 or 40 guys are not all cut out to pastor. Not even close. You know how many guys we have right now that are ready to be sent out as a pastor? One. And that's Tyler Baker. One. Okay, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few.